Good evening. How's it going, guys? I'm so glad you joined me. And I want you to know I'm excited about tonight. You should be excited about tonight because we are talking about being an heir and seeing your life go to a whole other level. We have an inheritance from God. This stuff's been good. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for taking the time to share. Um, thanks. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us what's going on. Let's communicate. I love watching midweek with you guys and just being there, giving you a little shout out. But thank you for sharing. We're reaching so many people. Just got a a, a message yesterday um, from somebody out of state. Hey, man, we got a family member in Daytona Beach. We've been watching, and we want them to connect to the church through Facebook. That's what I'm saying, you see? I don't know them. You don't know them. We're going to know them. We're going to meet them. But we're praying. We're believing God. For Psalms chapter 2, it says that the lost are our inheritance. They've been given to us by God. Now, I'm not saying that person's lost, but people are looking to connect with the church. The more... Uh, availability and the more opportunity we take to share about the church, they find it. Last Sunday, walking through the lobby, woman came up. Hey, Pastor Chris, you don't even want to know how I found the place. I was like, what happened? I was praying. This is his testimony. I was praying. I'm going to get the people to do it themselves and it just have a real punch. You know, it's just like, oh my God. Uh, I was praying. I was believing God lead me, God show me where to go. And they said through confirmations, an invitation, verbal, um, saw it online, a couple, three to four things happened. Um, it was quick, you know, in passing in the lobby. I'm here, I'm becoming a member, I'm sticking it out, I'm relevant. And I go, what if we don't share? What if we don't take the time? What if you don't talk to the guy? I talked to my coffee guy. He's telling me about his work schedule. Hey, man, I'm going to see you, right? Man, I was working. I'm sorry. I forgot about asking him. I asked him, totally forgot about it, gave him a postcard, Easter. Then he was like, he came to me. Next time I seen him, he's like, hey, man, sorry I didn't make it that Saturday, but I'm coming this week. He can be here for Easter, right? So he came to Easter because I forgot. I even invited him. When he reminded me about the invitation, Boom. You see it? So I'm sitting here going, man, we got to make sure we let them know. Sitting the other day somewhere yesterday, telling people about Jesus. That's what you do. Invite them. And somebody said, well, you know, church, you know, church. Give me a break. Listen, people cannot just get saved out on the street. I'm going to say something. Might not be beyond popular opinion, but I don't care. I think you're better off getting saved in church than anywhere else. Now, I'm not going to stop, you know, somebody from getting out there in the street might be quick, but where are they going to go to get educated? The Bible says if you make a believer, right, if you reach a believer, teach them the truth. So how important is it for me and you to do this? So I'm real adamant. I mean, you guys seen Easter. This place is blowing up. We're growing every single week, our online audience, because you're helping us do it. And all of this is one click. One share right now, just one share. You share, and we we just reach. So I'm going to be real, real adamant about it because I know we're changing people's lives. Well, praise the Lord, it's offering time. Check out this scripture I got for you. Second Corinthians, right? 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, possessing enough to what? Require no aid or support. Man, ain't that good. He's furnishing the abundance, furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. I don't know about you, but that sounds like it's done. Everything you have need of, God knows what you have need of. He already supplied what you have need of. And all you got to do is ask. And I got news for you. You know what's funny? If you ask, he'll supply. Because you wouldn't be asking. There's a law in that. You wouldn't be asking God if you didn't think he could supply it. He who comes to God must believe that he is. That he's God? No, that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know he's a rewarder. He's a rewarder of what you ask because he's your heavenly father. 
Four ways to give. They're all on the screen. You can see them up there right now. Whatever way is easier for you. And we claim what we need right now. I've been saying this. Man, we're a talking church. Claim what you need. God, I'm believing God for $50,000. I got to get this thing done. I'm getting out of debt. I believe you're moving. Whatever it is, job, raise, bonus, better job. I don't know. We're believing. We're expecting. We claim it right now in Jesus' name. We break the power of the enemy. I have dominion. You have dominion over the enemy in Jesus' name. And we loose the angels of heaven to go get our harvest right now. Angels are going. They're getting the provision. They're leading me to the secret treasures of life. You're leading me to the blessing of God. And I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about being an heir and receiving your inheritance in Christ. You are an heir, and I am an heir of everything now. I read this, and I thought this was kind of cute. Listen to this. I became an heir to a fortune when I gave my life to Jesus. Ain't that good? At that moment, I was born again into the richest family ever known. I was born into a royal family that owns and operates the universe. I received an inheritance so vast, it will take me all of eternity to fully comprehend it. Man, that was great, wasn't it? That was just a quote. Um, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. It was really good. I found that, man. I thought that was great. I was just like Googling around some stuff to find some stuff. Man, that was so good, right? I became an heir to a fortune. How did you become an heir to a fortune? When I gave my life to Jesus. At that moment, I was born again and in the richest family ever known. I was born into a royal family that owns and operates the universe. And I received an inheritance so vast, it'll take me all of eternity to fully comprehend it. That's my inheritance. You got to receive your inheritance. So what we're doing is this. We're renewing our mind to what we've been given. We're claiming our rights. So I want to look at a bunch of scriptures. Let's just look at Galatians 4. You can look at verse 1. It's where we started. And um, we're going to go over this a couple times because it just really helps you see it. Galatians 4 and 1. Now I say that the air, and um, we can look at it in um, a couple of translations too. We're going to look at verse um, 7 in a minute in the NLT. But now I say that the heir, that's me and you, as long as he is a child. Now, you got you to gotta play two sides of that child thing because you are a child of God. But I think here he's looking at it like as long as they're a child, they differ nothing than a servant. There's a maturity thing there, okay? Because he goes on to say in this scripture, he goes on to say, so now I say the heir, that's me and you. As long as he's a child, differs nothing in the servant. So there's a maturity aspect. Do you see that? He's saying child is a servant. So I don't want to be a child of immaturity or a child of outside of covenant. I'm the child of God who's an heir. So this is big. So now I say the heir, as long as he's unlearned, immature, spiritually not developed, however you want to say it, he differs nothing than a servant. Servant doesn't have the same relationship as a son. Even though he's Lord of all. Wow. Lord of all. Who's Lord of all? The heir. The me and you. Now watch what it says. So the servant, okay, he's talking about the servant I see is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. So we were there, right? Even so, when we were children, we were where? In bondage under the elements of the world. Well, we ain't in bondage no more because Jesus fixed that. So we say, when we were lost, when we were outside the family of God, when we were what? Spiritually dead. That's what it's about. And some of you even became alive in the Christ and we were unlearned. We're in bondage under the elements of the world. We were stuck. 
Now look at the next verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come. So what's that mean? The fullness of time was Jesus. Not now. The fullness of time was Jesus. God sent for Jesus, his son, made of a woman, and made under the law. Now there's a lot of reasons why he was made of a woman. Why he came as a man. Because I've been saying this forever. Jesus Christ conquered Satan as a man. So he could set men free from the bondage and the penalty of sin. So he's the only sinless man that ever walked the face of the earth. Powerful. Why? To redeem them. Now that word redemption is huge. To buy back. To ransom. That word redemption is everything that the blood of Jesus Christ bought back for me and you. And you can't undo what the blood did. So you've been washed, clean, sanctified. Man, you got a lot of stuff going on. So he redeemed them that were, what, under the law, that they might receive the adoption of sons. Now see, now see, now he starts talking about you were a son servant, but now you're a son heir. Son servant was the lost guy. Son heir is the new guy that came in through Christ. How come? Next verse. Because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son in your heart. That's how you got born again. So the minute you became born again, God becomes your father. We cry, Abba, Father. And now we leave servanthood and step into sonship. Sonship comes with heirship. Heirship comes with lordship. Lordship comes with kingship, and after that, the world is yours, baby. There ain't nothing in the world can stop you. Wherefore, now he explains it. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. And in if a son, you are an heir of God through Christ. Wow. Wow. Crazy cool, right? I mean, you can even go on to verse 8. Hey, when you didn't know God, you did service unto them things that were not God. Now watch the next verse. But now, after that you have known God, or rather God has what? Or rather known of God? How are you going to go back to the, be the weak, beggarly elements wherefore you desire again to be in bondage? Don't go back. Don't go back. Look what it says in Galatians 4, 7, NLT. Strong. It's got a real good uh, ring to it. I like it. And you know you're a joint heir. You know you're blessed. You see this. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. We are heirs of everything, man. That's wild. That's strong. So, let's go to Colossians 1 and 12. Colossians 1 and 12, King James is great. It says, you know, give thanks in the Father. Here's where the transfer took place. Give thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet. Remember we talked about that? Enabled, qualified last week. Made, able, equipped to be a partaker of the inheritance. We're partakers of the inheritance. Well, how were you made a partaker of the inheritance in the state? In light, by God. Look at 13. Jesus, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us in the kingdom of his dear son. So he's saying, Jesus took you out of one kingdom, put it in the other. Jesus took you out of one body and put it in another. That's how the inheritance comes because you're in the body. And you don't have to wait to heaven to claim this. You're supposed to be having heaven on earth. Your inheritance belongs to you now. I like this um, Acts 20, 32. Because it kind of explains 
the, the understanding of the word of this inheritance. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up the word of grace and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. See that? So he said the word of grace. So this is a grace message. Does that make sense? God did it because of grace. It's I have a rightful inheritance. It's my inheritance. I have complete access. Look at Galatians 4, 7 in the message. Galatians 4, 7 in the message. I'll just give you a lot of word to help you kind of marinate in this. In the message Bible, man, it's big, man. It just makes it so clear, like, boom, it's like a knockout punch, man. You know, if you're a child of God, praise the Lord, man. I'm a child of God. How about you? If you are a child of God, right, we'll read the whole thing because it kind of clumps it together. But when the time arrived that he was set by God against the son, born among women, born again, the law, right? See right there? That he might redeem those of us who have been, what? Kidnapped by the law. Thus we have been set free to experience our rightful heritage. You can tell what? For sure that you are now fully adopted, his own children, right? Because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives, crying, Papa, Father, doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with you, make what God, make it plain with you, you're not a slave, but a child. And if you're a child, you're also an heir with complete access to the inheritance. Did you read that? Complete access. If you're a child, you have complete access. Complete access to what? All of it. God owns everything. You got a rich inheritance, man. You got a rich and glorious inheritance. I like this, man. Uh, you want to see another one? Look at Ephesians 1.18, Amplified, the straight amp, AMP. It's a good translation. Helps them see it. I surely want you to understand you're united with Christ. We received inheritance from God. I got to brainwash you into this blessing side because when you hear these things the first couple of times, you reject it because you're like, where in the heaven am I going to get an inheritance like that? I own it all. Yeah, you do. Your father's loaded. Born into a royal family. Ephesians 1.18, the amp. You're going to like this one, man. You got to know, you know, you know how rich you are? Man, rich. Now, that's everything, though. And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center of your core of your being, may be enlightened and flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you. Oh, that's good. To what? the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints. Whoa, 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 whoa. He called me to what? The riches of what? His glorious inheritance in the saints. God's people, right? But what does he say this inheritance is? He said it's riches. Riches of this glorious inheritance. He didn't say just an inheritance. He said this thing's rich. Making you rich, blessing you, overpowering you. Man, this whole thing's at another, another total, another gear. Now check this out. Look at First Peter uh, three four, and uh, yeah, just this thing, man. First Peter three four. See all these scriptures just pounding over and over are helping you see this, man, because this thing's priceless. This inheritance. But let it be. Remember we read this one. But let uh, let it be the hidden man in the heart. Man, yeah, that's, I want you to see this. And then, uh, yeah, it's 1 Peter 1, 3. That was my bad. Sorry. 1 Peter 1, 3. But this is good too. But I can just read that one. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, right? In which that is not corruptible, but what even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, great guys, great price. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. That's where all this stuff is. It's all inside you spiritually. So you got to just unlock yourself. The riches are in here. It's in you, but let it be the hidden man in heart. Who's the hidden man in heart? It's the spiritual you. So there's a you, there's a soul, and then there's a body. And you got to get your soul and body to agree with this blessing, man. 
Look at 1 Peter 1, 3, and 4. This is what he's saying. Because he, when he went on to say this stuff, he's talking spiritual stuff. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To a what? To an inheritance. That can what? It's incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, preserved for you in heaven. Now I got news for you. It's in heaven and earth, and heaven's in you, and you're in the earth. So don't just think like, oh, this is this is just in heaven. It's available now. What you gonna need this stuff for in heaven? You need the inheritance of healing in heaven? You're gonna be healed there, bro. You need provision in heaven? No, you need money down here. You need sanity in heaven? You'll be with God for crying out loud. You need all this stuff in heaven? No, you need it in the earth. And I uh, I think you can't beat it. You're an heir according to the promise. God's promise was the blessing. You know, look look at Genesis 12, Genesis 12, 2 and 3, and I want to look at it in the AMP, the AMP. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. You're going to see this thing. He's going to prosper you, man, in every area of your life. And I will make of you, this was God's promise. This is what we got. We got the blessing of Abraham. We're going to go do this a little backwards, but I want you to see this. Then we'll go to 329. We'll go to Galatians. Uh, we'll go to Galatians 329 after this and let them see it. And we can just do it in the amp and, and, and it'll make sense to them. But let me read this. And I will make you a great nation, Abraham. And I will bless you abundantly, Abraham. And I will make your name great, Abraham, exalted and distinguished. Ooh, I like that. And you will be a blessing. Ooh. A source of what? Great. A source of great good to others. And I will what? I will bless you. Look at this. My God in heaven. Do good for. Benefit. And I'll bless those that bless you. That's why connection is important. I'll curse, that is, subject to my wrath and judgment, to one who curses, despises, dishonors, and has contempt for you. Woo! That's fire. And in you, all the families of the nation of the earth shall be blessed. That sounds good, don't it? That's the blessing of Abraham. Now go over here to Galatians 3.29. And we can read it in, and if you be Christ's seed, then you're heir according to promise. We can read it in the AMP. I'm going to read it in AMP, message, and NLT. That's how excited I am about it. Right? Man, it's like a word. I'm going to work in, work in you in the word today. Right? Tonight you're like, Pastor Crazy gave me 19 scriptures. What do you want to hear me for? You know, I don't know, man. I'm not picking on nobody. I don't listen to a lot of preaching. But what in the heaven am I supposed to be preaching? You know what I mean? Like, I'm supposed to get up here and tell you what I think. I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. And then you, I'll, I expound a little bit, but I got scripture for you for all this. And if you belong to Christ, if you are in him, are you in him? Yeah, you're in him. You're in Christ. I'm in Christ. Then you're Abraham's descendant. And spiritual heirs according to God's promise. Somebody better shout. Somebody better go run around the house. So look what it says. If you belong to Christ, you belong to Christ. I belong to Christ. You belong to Christ. You say you belong to Christ. If you are in him, then you're what? You're of the descendants of Abraham, and you are spiritual heirs according to the promise of God. Okay, look at the message. I got message in NLT right back with the same scripture. Also, since you're in Christ's family, just read a little different. Let's marinate in this thing. 
I like this one, man. Now he goes on to add a little NL, NLT and message, add a little spin to it. In Christ's family, there could be no division, Jew, non-Jew, slave, free, male, female, right? We are all in common relationship with Jesus. And since you are, since you are Christ's family, then you are Abraham's famous. Woo! You famous, baby. I'm famous. And heirs according to covenant promises. God says the covenant. God can't break no covenant. It's a covenant from generation to generation. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. It's lineage, man. It's passed down the blessing. And it's yours. And it's mine. And we don't got to do nothing to dig it. it. Just believe it. Look at NLT. This is so good. NLT, I'm going to leave you with this one when I'm done with this. After this, if this ain't it, you, you need to check your pulse. And now that you belong to Christ, you belong to Christ, you saved, you born again, you believer, you're going to heaven, you are the true children of Abraham. Who are the true children? We are. Remember the Jews came to him and said, we are of our father Abraham. Jesus told them jokers, if you knew who Abraham was, you ding-dongs would have were already received, you would have received me. He's saying, this is what he's saying, and I know some of you are going to get mad. We bless Israel and all that. But just because you're from Israel doesn't mean you're a believer in Christianity. Now, I'm being nice. We pray for Israel. We love Israel. Don't go give me no hate mail. And I believe they're going to be saved. But let me tell you who the most chosen one of all is, me. Well, that's God's chosen people. I'm God's chosen people. You could be from, you could be from Nazareth, for crying out loud, and not be chosen. you got to be a believer to be chosen. Somebody's like, where you from? I'm from, I'm from Lodi. I got Jesus and I'm, I'm more a Jew than a Jew that grew up in Tel Aviv. I used to tell, I had Jewish buddies, man. I used to go preaching there all the time. They had all the names out of the Bible. It's hilarious, man. They had all these Bible names. I was like, that's the Bible. What's your name? Your name's this. And they would be named Judah and Moses and Sharon. I was like, you, you got a name. You guys got names from guys from the Bible. They were laughing one day. They were like, where do you think? That's why we came from there. One guy wanted me to go float in the Dead Sea with him. I said, you need to get saved, bro. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I said, the Messiah, man. You need Jesus? Yeah, he came and left, bro. He left you, man. You better get with it. He used to laugh at me. This thing, I was crazy. But the power of God would show up, and they couldn't argue with it. It's tangible, you know? So look at NLT. I don't know. I get on these bunny trails sometimes. And now that you belong to Christ, you're the true children of Abraham. We are the true children of Abraham, and we are his heir. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Oh, my God in heaven, you're Abraham's seed. That means everything God promised to him belongs to you. It's been passed down through Jesus. Abraham's blessing is your inheritance. It's been willed to you by the word of God. Read the will. Look in the Bible and find out what God left you. Find out what he left to Abraham because that's how God promised to treat us. Receive your inheritance. It's key. That's the takeaway. Renew your mind to the blessing. Renew your mind to the inheritance. Renew your mind to transformation. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for everybody watching. I thank you that you're changing their life. I thank you that you're moving forward in their life. I thank you, Lord, you're taking them from where they are to where they need to be in this inheritance. And I thank you, Lord, they are never going to be the same again because what you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Man, guys, I got an exciting announcement. It's for you, I, I, I hope you're ready. This Friday night, 7 o'clock, we have our men's meeting, glory to God, right here for the kingdom. I'm inviting guys from everywhere. Well, I'm saying for the kingdom, man, right? I got I got I got I got to have men's meeting. I got men's meeting and kingdom meetings all messed up. But we're having our we're having our men's meeting this Friday night, 7 p.m. Man, champions are showing up, bro. I'm telling you right here now, the gathering of champions will be in the house 7 p.m. Send your husband. It's a night meeting, 7 o'clock. I'm pushing it. I'm excited about it. I've been on the radio about it. I've been everywhere about it. I'm ready to see the men rise up and take the place that God's got for them. So, man, tell you what, send him. Let him come to the meeting. He's going to be better for it. Sign up, register. Registration's up. They'll put it up for you. You know where to go. I'm excited about some, have some man talk, spend some time with the guys. And I want you to know I love you guys. 
Appreciate you, and I'll see you Sunday, 9 and 10.30. It's going to be awesome. God bless you. We'll see you then. Don't forget, invite somebody. We're raising up a generation of champions around here, and you are one. See you then. Love you. Bye-bye. 